heard so much about the fat theory that people thought fat was connected with heart disease. You would be surprised to know that there is no connection between what you eat and the heart disease. The sugar lobby was worried in the 50s when they found out that sugar is a bad ingredient in food. And sugar is really bad. Good evening all of you. We have, we have not met but we, have, you know, we know each other and uh, we will know more frequently in future because I will be coming back again and again like an old Arab, Arabic saying. An old coin put into circulation, it bounces back again and again. So I am an old coin put into circulation in this circle. Friends, today I am going to talk to you for the 20 next 20 odd minutes about the common thing that you migrated Americans worry about, the food that you eat here, because you are worried, because there is so much of confusion in the Western science about the food that we eat and uh, what it should contain, uh, how it should be, and what, what are the ingredients, etc., etc. So, the science is not settled. As a matter of fact, I always say this is an imprecise science, the science of epidemiology. And the Western medicine has done very well in certain areas, especially in the control of communicable diseases, it has done well. But when it comes to non-communicable chronic diseases, Western medicine miserably has failed. Or it's not adequate. So, we need the buffering of some other system. And way back I wrote an article called How Might Ayurveda, the Indian Great Scientific Medicine, help modern medicine in completing the sickness care delivery system of all illnesses in the future. This was very well taken by the scientific community. And today I am going to discuss only about the food part of it because the food part is the most uh, misunderstood part in the West. I will give you a small gist in a, a bird's eye view into it. You have heard so much about the fat theory that people thought fat was connected with heart disease. You would be surprised to know that there is no connection between what you eat and the heart disease, especially the fat content of it. But how did this come about? Because the sugar lobby was worried in the 50s when they found out that sugar is a bad ingredient in food. And sugar is really bad. But they wanted to put the blame on someone. So they paid some so called, remember this, they paid some scientists to create a myth that and probably fat is bad. So they created this. And the whole thing is based on one study, a large study by a man called Ansel Case. Ansel Case was an epidemiologist. Epidemiology is a imprecise science, and there's a saying. Epidemiologists cause epidemics. And as a matter of fact, he has created an epidemic of fat. And this man, with his wife, who is a biochemist, got $110 million from the American taxpayers' money as grant. So he went around connecting the thing, and they went on a 22 country tour to study the epidemiology of heart disease. And they were wanted to find out the relationship between food and heart, and the fat in diet and heart. And then when they came back after 22 countries, they put their data together and lo and behold, they were not matching. There was no straight line connection between the fat intake in food and the incidence of heart disease or death due to heart disease. So what did they do? They can't give a negative reply to their funders because next funding won't come. So they had to give a positive reply. This is what is done, being done in Western medical science. So they sat down and cut country by country by country by country. And after 22 countries, they cut 16 countries. And they're left with six or seven countries where there was some sort of a relationship between the two. But mind you, this is only an association. Food intake of fat and heart disease were associated even in those seven countries, not. But they converted this association into causality. They said fat is the cause of heart disease. And this is a very, very bad science. To convert association into causality is very bad. I was in London at that time and we had a very interesting colleague of mine called Peter Taggart. And Peter did a study just to see. And what he did was he collected data on the number of trousers sold in Europe since Second World War. Like the number of uh, grams of fat taken in the food after Second World War. Because affluence came to Europe after the Second World War. And people had more money to buy. So they bought more things. And would you believe that the association with the number of trousers sold 
and heart disease was also more relevant than the amount of fat that take in the food so he jokingly wrote an article saying that wearing buying trousers and wearing them causes heart disease so you can connect any two the associations when two things go up in society lot of things are associated with it and when association becomes causality it becomes ridiculous so if you now understand the whole thing was so ridiculous that this so called fat has nothing whatsoever to do with heart disease as a matter of fact cholesterol is a part of our own body's creation our own liver produces cholesterol and 90 almost 80 to 90% of the cholesterol that you see in our blood comes from your own liver and only 10 to 20% of the cholesterol comes from the food you take so but then if you now look at the western science and normal man common man's thinking they are so worried about cholesterol that they think of cholesterol with even more cell they take as a food and that itself is a stress in this context i would like to remind you the holy science of on the holistic science and the longitudinal studies of indian science of ayurveda as a matter of fact the western science has got what's called the rct as its background randomized controlled trials these are all short studies maximum 6 months and the longest was 5 years and within that time you don't get the real idea now listen to me in the short study they found there was a study called mr fit study multiple risk factor intervention trial which went on for 5 years and they found lot of association between cause and effect but when it went to 10 years the whole thing reversed when they continued to observe it for 25 years they found none of the old things held any water so the mr fit study said there are no risk factors at all in the mr fit study so risk factor is an imagination and even if you control the risk factor with all the drugs and uh, surgery that you know today we do that if your sugar is up we have a drug if your blood pressure is up we have another drug all chemicals so all this can only improve the risk factor but the risk if any that ultimate risk remains if supposing some, somebody has a risk for a stroke or a heart attack even if you control his uh, sugar and cholesterol and high blood pressure the heart attack and the stroke will certainly come in spite of controlling the risk factors so the mr fit study said in this study there are no risk factors so the cholesterol thing was blown off in the mr fit study itself but now we have another study which has gone on for 90 long years this is a study of the alumni from harvard university of the 1930s and the study has been observing them for longevity and good health for the last 90 odd years a lot of them have died a few have survived and what has come out in this study is something very interesting very very interesting and what it showed was that only three things mattered for health and longevity a alcohol which is a enemy of mankind so the short studies showed that alcohol is good for heart disease in some studies this was funded by the alcohol industry now alcohol has been found to be very bad next thing that was found to be very bad was alcohol and tobacco smoking so apart from alcohol and tobacco smoking the only thing that determined your longevity and your good health is your capacity to love others show compassion and have a social contact and friends and relatives look after them so three things came up a alcohol b tobacco three love and would you believe this is exactly what ayurveda has been saying for hundreds of years and ayurveda so beautifully says that food is not important it is what you do and what you eat is important how much you eat so it says one small stanza which explain our lifestyle one it says hita mita ahara sevi nitya hita mita ahara sevi eat food in moderation that you like remember that is very easy the food that you like eat in moderation so it doesn't matter what you are eating 